Hey guys, what's up? Evan from Stock Music Musician, and today I have a couple further tips on how to boost performance in Reason. Um, a lot of this is actually more conceptual as a recorder, musician, engineer, mixer, master, as opposed to anything specific with Reason. But I've noticed a lot of people having trouble with performance in Reason 9.5 as you start layering in VSTs. And part of this, I think, is definitely because there needs to be more optimization done in Reason 9.5 and in some of these VSTs. But part of it is I think people have also been approaching things incorrectly conceptually. Um, and I made a video uh, yesterday about the sort of three hats that you want to make wear as a producer. Uh, and I did that more from the perspective of quality control, but now I want to tell you why you want to also apply that and why it's helpful um, in the context of making more performance gains in Reason 9.5. So basically, just to recap the video about the three hats you might wear as a producer, uh, which is linked above and below, uh, basically you want to have your recording hat on when you're recording, then you want to have your mixing hat on when you're mixing, and then you want to have your mastering hat on when you're mastering. And on one hand, you can approach this conceptually, but this video is now about applying that to benefit your performance in Reason 9.5. Now, if you haven't taken a second to like and subscribe, uh, I'd recommend doing that now, or I'd appreciate if you do it now. Um, and if you have some more comments about how to boost performance that I didn't cover in the previous video about boosting performance in Reason 9.5, please leave them below. So um, it occurred to me that uh, after a conversation in the comments with Jiggy Wig that this is something that a lot of people might not be doing. Uh, so basically when you're in the recording stage of your tracks, what you want to do is you'll have all your VST instruments up, you'll have your rack extensions up, you'll even be recording audio tracks, right? But once you're done with the recording, and it takes a lot of sort of experience and knowledge to know when that happens and when you've got everything you want. What you need to do is bounce all those tracks that you've recorded into separate audio files. It's that simple. Then you create a new session. So you might call the first one record like love song recording. Then you're going to create a new session and you call it Love Song Mixing. And from there, you're just going to import all of those audio tracks that you've bounced. So now you're not going to have any VST synthesizers playing. You've freed up your DSP processor to only play audio because the VSTs will have been rendered to audio. And playing back audio for a reason is a cinch. It can play bajillions of tracks of audio without a hiccup. And so now you're free to apply VST effects and VST plugins, and then also rack extensions and built-in effects. And this is where you're going to do your EQ and compression and all of that. And so this is going to really free up your processor to only focus on those effects. Um, and also, as I discussed in the previous videos, it's really going to help focus you on doing the big wins in each step. Now this isn't to say like if you're really unhappy with your mix, you shouldn't go back to the recording stage and add some more sounds or you can add a couple instruments in this mixing stage if it really feels too thin. Um, and it's not to say that you shouldn't go back to the previous one and maybe change some sounds and bring it in. But the point is that right now when you're mixing, you're mixing the stems. You are not mixing the VST instruments. And this tracks exactly what happens in a real recording studio. Uh, usually one person, one engineer might record it in their studio and they're going to send all the stems to the mixing engineer who's going to mix it with the effects and the plugins and all of that. Finally, for the third step, mastering, what you're going to do is you're going to take your the stems that you had bounced down in the mix stage and applied the effects to and you're going to export that just as a stereo file, fully mixed and all of that and then you'll put your three or four mastering plugins on. Um, and I'll do a video at some point soon about mastering and reason 9.5, but you know, that's going to be maybe, maybe some multiband compression, maybe some EQ, maybe some saturation and some maximization. Um, and so that way 
by doing these three steps and by shrinking down the processing requirements in each step, you're going to get a huge performance boost and you should be able to avoid some of the bottlenecks that people have been experiencing in Reason 9.5. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, leave some other suggestions or comments about how you can get around the bottleneck. And I welcome any discussion we want to have about this.